I'm meeting my competition for the first time and Canary, uh, I'm excited to engage with ladies of stature this okay. morning. Great. Dr. Stella Nyanzi is uh, a medical anthropologist, feminist, a human rights activist, scholar of sexuality and family planning and public health, and she recently showed her interests for the seat of woman MP uh, running on the FDC ticket, and that's why she perhaps is uh, all dressed up in blue. And then on the uh, right-hand side, I have Farida Nambi, a social worker and activist, and now turned a politician. Farida, good to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. And I greet all the people of Kampala and those around Uganda and abroad listening. Farida is going to be coming for the woman MP seat, battling it out uh, with the rest, but on the ticket of NRM. We're going to discuss that in just a bit and her competitors who should be battling it out in the NRM primaries. And then I have a lady here cloned in, uh, in, in red from NUP, or see she's uh, uh, wearing a people power cape. <laughs> Good to have you on the show, Shamim Malende. Yes, thank you, Kanri. Uh, good morning, viewers and listeners. I'm Shamim Malende Asperi, woman member of parliament for the position uh, of uh, for Kampala District 2021, and I'll be running on the NOP ticket, uh, stroke uh, the People Power Movement ticket, and our symbol is the umbrella. I'm pleased to be uh, part of this show and also to be able to meet up with such amazing women, and uh, I, I look forward to the deliberations. Uh, maybe to add uh, one thing, um, I wish to inform our viewers that are. Um, uh, I'm one of uh, Bobby Wine's lawyers and also uh, one of the lawyers for People Power and I'm handling uh, People Power cases, over 300 files on pro bono, but I also offer free legal representation to oppressed Ugandans uh, from across the uh, board and uh, recently we were able to have uh, the Bizonto group comedy out of jail. Yeah, you uh, recently secured their... Yes, uh, their <coughs> release on police bond, Gerard Kiwewa. We had some uh, city border riders that were in Kitaria prison, and we also secured their release. Basically, I help victims of political persecution and uh, other oppressed Ugandans for Okay, free. we'll discuss that in just a bit. Okay. But first, let me begin there. There's a lot of confusion in your introduction. You said NUP struck people power. What in the world is that? Uh, basically, what the people of Uganda have to know is that uh, the people power movement does not need an introduction. Everyone knows it's, 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 it's a movement that is inclusive, that brings uh, about all Ugandans who are interested in seeking change, mm. uh, who are interested in regime change, uh, using non-violent means. And this, because it's inclusive in nature, uh, we, 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 we ally with all other political parties, we bring uh, uh, independents on board, and we bring uh, even technical people for our device on board. So we are inclusive and we are for everyone. However, the NOP, or the National Unity Platform, is uh, a registered version of the People Power Movement. What I mean is that it is a legal vehicle to implement the people power decisions mm. and basically it is going to assist us <coughs> yeah to, to to clear the air or to remove the confusion about our symbol on the ballot how will ugandans know that this person is the one that is on the people power movement uh, so uh, uh, <coughs> that agrees with the people power movement ideology so, so what so what you what you did was yes. to Go on with your movement of people power, but but just for just just for symbolism, you just said let's secure a political party. So the party does not have a constitution or what? No, you, because the way you you the way you're presenting it, it's as if all you needed was just a political party to have your symbol on the ballot papers. No, everything is everything is there, the constitution and everything that is supposed to govern us. Mm. But what we are saying under the Chagulani generation, we are focusing more on. Uh, you know, we are doing things in the unusual way. We don't want you to use a lot of English. The Chagulani generation? Yes. Uh, uh -huh. Yes. The generation that is going to take over power in 2021. That mm. is the Chagulani generation. We are changing systems. We are changing the way things are being done. Because we have seen, uh, we have seen uh, our comrades have been here and mm. they have really tried their best. Mm. So, and we are saying, why is it that they have not achieved the results? So we are saying, we are changing the system. So we don't want to use a lot of English in this thing. We are saying that the NOOP or the National Inter Platform is a legal vehicle to help us implement people power decisions legally, a legal vehicle. 
So we don't want to use a lot, and we don't want to go into, you know, we, we are choosing to be a bit covert because we have learned this regime and how the way uh, and the way it operates okay let's get into your plan i'd like to interject because uh, in, in, in i'm just also a in member of people power i want to strongly say to shamim as a person who practices the law and she has postured here presented her credentials as one of the lawyers for bobby wine as a member of people power who you know has been loyal to the people power cause I think that you owe Ugandans an explanation as people power, especially for those of us from other parties, because I hear a discourse that is very dishonest from people power members who are not educated about the meaning of having a political party called NUP, National Unity Platform, and having people power historically, in the short history of people power, whether we speak in English, big English, big English words or not, there is a history in which we were invited as Ugandans, interested in the liberation struggle, and we were told emphatically, you don't have to leave your political parties, right? You can come as you are, come with your party, come without your party, come as an independent, come if you believe in the cause for regime change. Mm. And we joined People Power. Some of us were very active in People Power before the Shamims came on board, mm. before the Chagulani generation, that, whatever that means. I don't know if, because I'm older than Chagulani, I don't know if I'm in the Chagulani generation <laughs> or not. But I, wa I, I want just to say, for those of us in People Power, because I insist on remaining, that is why Canary, I you, carried my forms. They have been... Nomination forms. Th they have Canary been... People Power. They but have I been want to say what the confusion Stella, is. They have been clear that now you have to choose. You're either no, in no, 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 no. No, 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 so no, what, no. So what we you... need to clarify to Ugandans mm. that nope is a political party. People power is a movement that is not let registered. Me, let me, let okay? me clarify. And so for people her. such as myself, I'm in FDC. I'm also in people power. I have a beret. I raise my fist. When you say you're in people power, what does that mean? It I does am not a even have a registration. People power, which means that when a people power member is arrested. Okay? I can wear my beret and go to the cause and march. When Dan City carries the people power flag, because he's a people power flag raiser, mm. I can come behind him with my FDC and my beret, my FDC blue dress and my beret. That is what we've been historically. Unless they're saying to us that there's been a U-turn in the history of people power and that people such as myself, who insist on staying in my party FDC, can no longer be members of people power. You cannot say to me, Stella, because you're FDC, and then people power got nope, you can no longer be a member of people power. Conceptually, there's real difference between people power as a vehicle, as a movement, as a pressure group that invited all of us to reach stable, okay. and we came. Okay, Shamim, we're going to and give you a time. Nope let is me, a political so, so let me put this to you. Yes, you Kameru. picked the nomination forms of FDC. Yes, and, and then I took you, them back. And you took them back. And now you're saying that you're a member of People Power. Sweetheart who, who, Canary, who are I you? took who, papers who, to both FDC and to People Power. But now things have changed because things if you belong... Things have not changed. I, I wish you listened to my question. Because at the barrio, Stella, I wish Charles you listened to my question. I wish you listened to my question. I went to the barrio as a member of People Power. I was in... Uh, what's the word? I was introduced as a member of People Power. I participated in the raising of the fist because the raising Raising of the fist is historically a protest symbol. Nobody owns that symbol, right? So my insistence on those of us in FDC, in NRM, in Chairman Yaz is NRM, okay? There are many people in DP who belong to People Power. People Power is about affiliation and association and believing in its ideals. Okay. So the so idea that one can no longer be a member of People Power must be abused and disabused. It's okay. an illusion which you as well as, you know, being moderator, you have to clear your mind and quickly educate yourself that movements are totally different conceptually from parties. The party is called NUP or NAP or NAPI. As an FDC member, I will not put on the NAPI, but I'm totally devoted to the causes of people power. Okay, so let me ask this, and uh, I'll come to you, Shamim, then I'll later hear from Farida Nambi. You saying that you still belong to people power? Yes or no? Stella. I am a member. I am a diehard believer of the ideals of people power. Okay. I was invited to people power. Okay. So I have participated in building people power. Okay, so Stella, people power... I am power, not a member of NUP. Okay. I will never join NUP because I have FDC, which serves my purposes as a political party. Okay, I so don't people know power, what NUP represents. People power has a leader, and so does FDC. Yes. Where does your allegiance uh, lie? 
So I have a grandfather from my mother's side and I have a grandfather from my mother's side. My allegiance is to both. That is how pressure groups, that is how movements work. Okay, back to Shamim. Yes. Talk to us, what is your plan for Kampala? Why are you running for this seat, woman well, MP? Before I go to that, uh, I want to uh, clarify something that Dr. Stella raised here. She seems to be having a lot of questions with no answers, so I'll help her briefly to clarify. Uh, first and foremost, I want her to know that, uh, uh, first and foremost, no one is forcing anybody to abandon their political party. Mm. So she can remain in FDC. She's FDC, um, um, nope. No one is forcing her. So she still has that right. Secondly, uh, let me arrest her fears uh, regarding, you know, not being people power or being people power. Uh, the talks between the principals or among the, the leaders of the different uh, political affiliations are still ongoing. Mm. So I don't know why she's too fast to judge, why she's, she's coming out, to, you know, she's, she's acting under panic. No, wait, wait, you wait, wait. let me, no, let me clarify. You had your time, you had your time. Let Stella, me give clarify time. this. Give her time. You, you should not be under panic because you're not a member I'm of, not you know, you wait. You are questions. not a member asking of, no, you are FDC. So I am people power. Now you have already I'm had asking your time. Can you give me time to explain? Questions to people power that all of us must ask. But this is not about making asking questions. Making questions. Let's not make no, questions. We, you know, we are speaking to oppressed Ugandans and they are listening. Please, let's not. Ugandans in people power. This is not about you know, yapping and over talking. Okay, it's about addressing okay, issues. Okay, okay, please. Okay, okay, can, so we so let's, can we address. Okay, so. Me okay, so. Me so me I'm, okay, so. I'm not a yapper. Okay, so. critical thinker asking critical questions that must be answered. Why is she calling it yapping? Give me time to explain. No, because you're misrepresenting me. Don't misrepresent. Me. Don't say I'm, I'm panicking. panicking. A panicker doesn't look like I do. The words you respect say. me. I have respected but you, you as a person. Don't please. say I'm panicking. Do I look like I'm panicking? The, the words do I look me. like I'm panicking? Yes. I'm asking critical questions that must be asked. I'm a critical thinker. I'm a critical scholar. I have to ask. Thank you. When you were asked in your examination room about things that you should have known, was it panic when your examiners asked you? All right. Thanks, Stella, for that clarification. Shamim, so, let's yeah. move on to your so plan what, for, uh, for Kampala. Yeah, but, what, but still... Why, why are you standing for the woman MP for Kampala? Yeah, uh, after arresting, I think I have arrested your fears. You, let you wait no when the principals, when the pri no yes, fears. okay, your questions. questions will be answered when the principals come out of the meeting. Shamim, now Second, on to my about question. the issue of the People Power Alliance and mm. everything, the talks that are ongoing, let's wait. Please don't be under panic and don't please. Don't ask questions about NUP because you on air because you're not a, because you're not you a NUP member. You know, expand your vocabulary. Okay, le let let me now go that when someone is being clever, don't use panic. You're clever. Here hey, I am. Thank clever thank questions. Yeah, let's clever. Okay. let's I think address the issues and uh, leave uh, the uh, other argument alone. That's appropriate, Colonel. Um, but she must also learn to respect people. Yes, but Shamim. Even, yes. Shamim, please let's respect I'm everyone. Yapping. You said I'm yapping. You have insulted everyone no, before, so please do not insult. Oh, you you call me a yapa. I am not a yapa, Shamim. You have to be careful about your vocabulary. We are speaking to the public. You have called me a yapa and you say I'm yapping when I'm asking questions. You say you studied law. Use language appropriately. Please. Thanks, uh, thanks, Stella. I will now move on to uh, Farida Nambi. Farida, you want to run on the uh, NRM ticket. What is your plan for Kampala? Correct. Um, before I answer that question, I would like to wish the people of Buganda and uh, the Muslims, to Muslims, happy Eid, because we're st going on for three days. Mm -hmm. And to the Buganda Kingdom, I salute uh, the Buganda Kingdom and uh, the Kabaka Mtebi for having achieved 27 years of success and great growth in the Buganda Kingdom. Now, uh, Nambi Farida, yes, is a contestant on the NRM ticket for Kampala Woman MP. My plans, I'm not new to the work in Kampala. Canary, I started in 2003 um, with the Nambi Children Initiatives. Mm. Registered it, started as voluntary people, collecting education bursaries for orphans, and especially total orphans from mm. the ghetto area. My home was plot 96 Kira Road, just here, your neighbor. And behind is the biggest slum called Kifumbira Slums. So I have seen the pain in children who are despairing, women who have lost their husbands, those are single mothers. I've seen prostitutes 
who also have cases why they run away from home and, and have seen rural urban migration enlarging the slums. So I am not new. I have come to enter uh, with the mandate, to enter parliament with the mandate of the people to continue. Me, I'm not new. I've been at service. I have witnesses and beneficiaries to my service. I've been a producer of Nambi Talk Show as a media pro platform to lobby for, uh, for children's causes. I'm a member of Ugandan Child Rights Network. I am the president of the Union of Muslim Women that works with the Mother's Union, works with the Catholic Women's Guild, works with the Pastor's Wives, and um, the Seventh-day Adventist Women. So I am not new in service. Okay, so I have why do you think that that qualifies you as a good candidate for that seat? It qualifies because one of the biggest disservice that we have received, and I will speak as I'm a citizen, of, I'm a resident in Maki India, as Kampala, is having people that are not passionate to the service of the most common person. Mm. And if I have served already and I am going to continue service, that gives me a big shoe because I know the problems down there and I will be legislating for those people, I will be mostly lobbying, lobbying here in Uganda and internationally for the less privileged people. Okay, Farida, yeah. what, is you, what is Kampala's biggest problem? The Kampala's biggest problem, according to me, are leaders that go, don't go back to the people. And the issue of that um, uh, people vote, Kampala here has voted, but when you go down there, they tell you that we have not seen our leaders. Mm. Service has not reached down to the people, either through corruption or bureaucracy, or people are just silent in the parliament. Mm. So Kampala has a big vacuum of, to be represented, especially under this Kampala woman seat. Mm. So I bring on experience, I bring on my service to children and women who are the most vulnerable groups, by the way, in Kampala. NRM is considered a weak party in terms of uh, mobilization here in Kampala. And that we can tell through the members of parliament being able to front, mm. um, you know, to parliament just in Kampala alone. Look at all the divisions. Mm. It has none. Mm. Why are you choosing to run on an NRM ticket? Uh, first of all, I would lo I'd wish to correct you. Mm. NRM has won a seat in Kampala. On this position, Kampala woman MP, mm. Mrs. Margaret Ziwa, mm. she was the member of parliament before Honorable Nabira came. Mm. And uh, Muhammad Nseriko, Honorable Kampala Central, came in as an NRM person and won. So Kampala is not like a Bible, that Bibles or Qurans that they cannot be changed. Mm. Kampala has been lacking a person who truly has witnesses and beneficiaries. You know you can't, I'm a heart print, Nambi is a heart print. She will be given votes by both the opposition and the NRM. That's not possible. It is possible. How is it going to be possible that opposition is going to vote for you? you listen to me. Mm. It, you could pick votes from opposition people who have benefited or witnessed your service on the ground. Mm. Yes. Because, because you know parties are eventually canary. Sometimes they don't matter. People can vote for you as as they are convinced as long as they are convinced that it, you can offer the service. Uh, they, they matter. That's why you're running on NRM ticket. I am running on NRM. I'll explain that. Because NRM, for me as Nambi, Canary, get this from me today, I always stick with the party in government. Why? It has power and resources. Mm. Okay? I, I, Nambi, I offer a message to the people of Kampala. My message of what I'm going to do. I don't have the budget. So let us not lie to these Ugandans. Nobody here will have the budget. We will be uh, offering oversight on the budget of the existing government. And I can assure you, with NRM having 11.9 members, we are going to win the presidency. That figure is contested. But before I move on to the, the other panelists, uh, you're saying that you always stick to the party in government because yes. of its resources. And so when it goes so, away, so you, Canary, mm. I go into the next government. So you, come. Okay, so you are in NRM because you don't believe in its values and uh, principles but because you think it's in government and therefore and that's a fact it's in government and therefore you're going it's going to be easy for you to lobby resources i am going to elaborate for you not the many so you don't believe in, in in the party you don't believe in what the party I am a member because for. i believe huh? i'm not a, a a a woman who can be coerced i'm a member and i have my membership card but Where if government changes to today you? you'll move on to the next one yes because i move within the governments in power because i want actual service 
I've not come in here to be like an activist on the road with posters. Eh? Museveni must go. No. Yeah. I'm a religious woman. I know that the president came into this power by the grace of God. And by that time that the God who brought him wishes, he will take him away. Okay. Thanks, I'm Farid. loyal to governments that are in place. Okay. Thanks, yes. Farid. <laughs> your loyalty. Dr. Stella Nyanzi, talk to us about uh, your uh, membership with FDC. Right. In FDC. I just want to reiterate what Farida says. She says she's not an activist standing on the road with posters saying Museveni must go. I am an activist standing on the road, infiltrating your minds, going on to TV and saying Museveni must go. Okay? Mm. And I belong to FDC because it's an opposition party. The ideology of FDC rhymes with my own ideology as an oppressed Ugandan who's crying desperately for liberation, for freedom. I'm tired of the oppression of the current regime. You said the same about people power. I, yes. And I'm telling you about my membership to FDC. I think that people power for me is an amplification of what we do in FDC. In FDC, we are defiant to the core. I joined FDC in 2017 after observing the grief of Ugandans who had lost the vote. Many of us voted for Dr. Chiza in 2016. Mm. We were refused a morning when we were beaten into silence by the repressive regime, an outpouring of military men on the streets. In that moment of mourning, I thought, where do I go to continue fanning a flame, my fire, to fight for liberation, right? People Power does one thing for me, that it allows me to work with others outside FDC party. On the same mission, Museveni must go. That is my mission. That is why I, my, my, my pulse beats with the pulse of thinkers and activists in people power. Mm. I belong to FDC, the question you asked, because we have claims to being a forum for democratic change. I am a true believer in democracy. I am embarrassed as a Ugandan that the current ruling party, NRM, has curtailed, cut off, shrunk, dissipated, eliminated, even murdered all the elements, the core elements, the core values of democracy. Forum for Democracy Change, uh, Forum for Democratic Change allows me to believe and hope that we can redeem democracy for Uganda mm. beyond elective politics, but also within elective politics. I think that FDC has proven to Ugandans historically, that we are a democratic party, right? We are perhaps the most democratic party that this country has. And because I believe in the tenets of democracy, no, and also no, because no, FDC no, allows you're not. me... No, you're not. You've had a, 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 only one candidate ever since the party started. It's, he's ran for presidential candidate for four terms. He's likely going to run for the fifth one. Why is democracy there? Why is that not democracy? I think that FDC, unlike NRM, allows me to challenge and criticize mm. that practice of having one sole candidate, if, if that's what you say. I am allowed within FDC to say, why is it that historically we've only fielded one party, mm. one, one presidential candidate? I am allowed within FDC. I am allowed within FDC to express these views, a thing that you cannot do in NRM. I'm allowed within FDC to actively ally with people power. My members, the, the, the members of FDC, the leadership of FDC, never say to Mr. Lanyazi, why are you running around with Bobby Wine? They never say that to me. There were threats that I would be thrown out of my party. There were even fake, photoshopped, uh, uh, what's the word, dismissal letters, mm. floated around social media, first, you know, Mr. Lanyazi has been thrown out of FDC because she criticized, because she asked about internal democracy. I am still in FDC. Why? I'm still running for the FDC primaries. Why? My nomination forms were accepted. Why? Because in FDC, we are allowed to express divergent views. Okay. So I'm a there's, testimony okay. of democracy within FDC. But, but, okay, but so there's you, always... You allow me. Hmm. You asked President about people Sorry power. Hmm. has been offering himself with the support of SEC. Has what was Anita doing? Listen. What was even Anita doing? It Kneeling down like you a must boat be thinking to ask must be a for him to be so special person. Because people, mm. SEC, which is the governing arm of the party of NRM, mm. keeps 
confronting him. What was Evelyn Anita doing? And he managed grappling to on the through floor the law to bring his kneeling and his begging him to be sole candidate remember, in 2016. And paying according to the law. So you cannot speak about NRM, internal democracies. I don't speak because okay, you so don't know them. Okay. I don't speak okay, about so NRM. I speak for FDC. Okay. And I say, I am a witness to the democracy within FDC that I've sorry, criticized. Sorry. I have criticized. I have questioned all the leadership. Unlike people power, when I began questioning about Noop, they wanted to throw uh, me out. Maybe I, I want to call for internal democracy, both within our country as people, but also in our parties. Mm. Because I claim that I speak truth to power. I don't only speak truth to power to dictator Museveni. I speak truth to power to my leaders in FDC. I speak truth to power to the leadership of people the power. I speak truth lifetime. to power. So okay, okay, so, so okay, so let's listen to each other. Let's listen to each other. Uh, Dr. Stella Nyaz. Yes. Um, so there's always a trade-off when campaigns start mm. that the presidential candidate will go and campaign for the member of parliament of that particular party when they are in that particular constituency and it's assumed mm. it's an assumption it's not always true 100 percent that the member of parliament or rather the candidate for mp ship in that particular constituency will also receive that presidential candidate mm. and campaign for them what will happen when robert chagulani comes to kampala and the presidential candidate for fdc whether it is dr kano kiza bsj or Lord Mayor, Elias Rukwago, whoever they will choose, what will happen when they come to Kampala and you are on the same seat here in Kampala district? What will you do? Who are you going to campaign for? So, Kadari, I don't want you to be like my people power comrade who is running over herself. Mm. In FDC, we have internal processes. Mm. We have a roadmap for our electoral, uh, our electoral roadmap in FDC. Mm. We, there was a call for those interested in the member of parliament positions, those interested in youth positions, all the special uh, interest group positions. We also have a debt for the presidential nominations. And those who want to express interest in being president will come. Mm. Why are we asking about speculation? Like, who is going to run for FDC? I, I, don't, think that's, I don't think that's a question for I asked. Me, the question I do I not asked want you to make me speculate about things that haven't happened. That's not what I asked. You the say to I me, asked, what happens if it hasn't yet happened? Right now, I know that Robert Chagulani Sentamu has expressed interest for over a year, okay, in the presidency. Mm. I know it for a fact that he has. Mm. I am waiting for my party, FDC, for its processes. I refuse to be coerced into discussing what has not yet happened, right? In the event that Robert Chagulani has a, cru uh, a crusade, a rally, or whatever it is, mm -hmm. I will go and sit there in my beret because I'm people power. I will not wear the umbrella because I'm not noob. When FDC has functions, I will go. Until they distinguish for me and say to me, Stella, you don't belong to people power. In fact, I'm expecting that my nomination forms that I took to people power and gave to their National Elections Management Committee are going to get the approval of people power because people power wants to go with the winning Kampala woman MP, and it's I. I don't know what Robert Chagulani will do in terms of NUP. He must decide and give the blessing to Shamin as a member of NUP. He's the president of NUP. In people power, my forms remain there and I expect his endorsement because I'm the best candidate for this position in people power. Okay. Right? And so, so, so I am expecting that the leadership of those groupings, those formations that I belong to, are going to build my candidature, are going to encourage me standing and contesting fairly and let Ugandans choose. Are you supporting the presidency of Robert Chagula? Totally. I am supporting the presidency of everybody who has expressed interest and is going to run. You I have not had as yet from my party. So let us wait for my party today. Mm -hmm. Robert Chagulani Senator Mu for me is the person who has expressed out of all those who are listed. Okay? I salute to Robert Chagulani Senator Mu. FDC has not fronted a candidate as yet. Well, I it will not be. I support Robert Chagulani Senator Mu because will not, he has declared he wants to run for president. It will not be too long. We have up to invite the 5th me again. of August. Invite me again. We have, up to the fifth, we have up to the 5th of August to know what uh, comes out of the internal activities of FDC yes. and who is going to be the presidential candidate for FDC. Shamim, talk to us about the confusion between people power and NOOP. Stella actually is uh, a clear representation of uh, exactly what's happening here, that people are divided between people power, NOOP, and then their political parties. Mm. Why did you choose to go this way um, as, as people power? First and foremost, uh, 
thank you for giving me this opportunity to clarify on this issue. Mm. Uh, the people power movement remains and it's inclusive and its principle is honorable but Chagua and Center. It brings on board all persons, all political parties, all independents, all change seeking people or Ugandans, whether here or Maybe use the other microphone. Yes, sir? Yes. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to clarify on this issue. Uh, first, I would like to tell the entire uh, nation that the People Power Movement remains. Yeah? It still exists, and its principle is Honorable Robert Chagulani Center. And this People Power Movement brings on board all persons who are change seekers, people who are interested in regime change, irrespective of your political affiliation. Mm. We are for Uganda. People Power Movement, we are for Uganda. We are for every person. We are for everyone. That is one. However, there is NOOP, which is a registered political party. It is called the National Unity Platform. That National Unity Platform was registered in a bid to answer questions that many Ugandans and voters have been asking the People Power Movement. Our comrades had already started telling us that we have no home. Yes. We have no symbol with that we are going to use. Ugandans were already getting confused and they were asking, how are we going to identify that these are the people that believe in the People Power values? Mm. It is not enough to say that you are people power because you have been with Chagulani for some time. Mm. It is not enough to say that you are people power because you, have, you are wearing a red beret. Mm. You must subscribe to the values of people power. Tell that to and Stella. among those, Tell that to we Stella. have the drifts. Mm. One is discipline. Discipline. A, a leader must have discipline then you must have a sense of reliability. You must be consistent when you're speaking. Mm. You must be reliable so that the masses can trust okay. that even when so they elect you to office, mm. you, you're, you're, going to, you're not going to go against them. Okay, so but let me put this to you. Yes. The forms that uh, people like Stella Nyanzi picked from yes. people power officers, mm. they had people power on them. Mm. What will happen? What, what's going to happen? Because like Stella Nyanzi has picked forms from FDC yes. and you've told people mm. like her that they don't need to leave their political parties, right? Yes. So what is going to happen? No, there are, t there are two ways. Mm. First, there is an issue of, um, of you know, answering the question or, or clearing the confusion mm. uh, about the voters. We are saying that if someone is picked as a candidate for people power, mm. They should be willing to use the umbrella to avoid confusion to the public. That is the first option. Stella, first wait. Uh, you must be willing to use the umbrella, not to cause confusion to the public. That is the first option. Mm. However, there is a second one. Mm. The two principles are still meeting. Actually, the principles are from the different political parties and affiliations. Mm. And the, there are other parties that have which, which memorandums. Which principles? We know, we know Robert Chagulani as yes. the head of people. Uh -huh. as, which as other the principles? Head of NOP, well, there is uh, Kiza Besige as the head of... Uh, uh, as as people power, pe pe people's government, mm. we have Patrick Amriato of the people's FDC. People's government is not even a, a, a political party. Yeah, it's but like it's people a power pressure, But they are in talks because so, they so have leaders. So, so let me ask you. Yes. What happens if someone from um, Nope? Yes. Uh, let me let me put this to you and draw mm. for you or paint a picture of the confusion here. Mm. What happens if someone? Uh, actually, this is the this is the a perfect example. Mm. You are from Nope, and you're mm. going to hold the umbrella as your symbol. Mm. Dr. Sela Nyanzi is from FDC, but has also mm. picked people power forms. Mm. What is going to happen? Are you going to go for primaries, or are you going to say, as long as you, as Shamim Malende, uh, has uh, accepted to mm. pick the umbrella as the symbol, and therefore the political party and people power are going to support you, mm. and not Stella Nyanzi? First and foremost, regardless, there are no primaries in the people power movement. As you know, it is not a registered party. That is the first issue. Mm. Secondly, I was giving you the second option, mm -hmm. that there are Parties that are signing memorandums with uh, the, the principle of NOPE and the Papa movement. Mm. So some of these candidates are going to be guided by the memorandum between the Papa movement principle or the NOPE principle and the, uh, the So for now you're parties, not sure. The other parties. What so are, no, there are two options. Mm. 
There are two options. And uh, that's why I was telling my uh, comrade from FDC that there's no need to rush and panic. Let's wait. Let's wait and see what comes out of the deliberations okay, thanks, regarding we now, that we now take a and short. Second, we now take a short commercial break, but when we return, we're going to still clear the confusion and uh, then uh, hear from Farida Nambi, Dr. Stella Nyanzi, and Shamim Malende about their plans for exactly what they want to do for Kampala. This is the big talk. Stay tuned here. We'll be back in just a bit. So, but Nothing else but big hits. 106.1. Next radio. Forget the times when you used to queue up to access the NSSF services at a branch. You can now access your NSSF account and all services online from anywhere at any time using any device from your laptop to a touch phone without visiting the branch. Access services like submitting and tracking your benefit claim, viewing your account balance and detailed statement, updating your account information, registering with NSSF and many other services. Choose from any of these self-service channels like the NSSF Go app, USSD, star 254, hash, SMS services on 0773, the 24-7 toll-free line 0800-286-773, the website www.nsfug.org, customer help email address, customer service at nsfug.org, and WhatsApp line 784 259 715 to enjoy the world of convenience. Join NSSF on the go and live an easy life. NSSF, a better life. Hello, my name is Dr. Mute, a public health expert in the Ministry of Health. Government has mandated wearing face masks in public to fight the spread of COVID-19. This is the correct way to put on a face mask. Wash your hands with running water and soap or an alcohol-based sanitizer. Use the earlobes to wear the mask. Ensure that the mask covers your mouth, nose, and chin. Ensure that there are no gaps between your face and the mask. Avoid touching the mask while using it. Replace the mask with a new one as soon as it gets damp and continue other preventive measures like social distancing and washing hands with soap and water. Please continue observing all existing protocols. For more information, please contact the Ministry of Health on short code 919. This message is brought to you by the Government of Uganda. Imagine a bank that tells you not to dream but dream bigger. Not to reach for the skies, but to stride farther. Not to just hustle, but to hustle harder. A bank that encourages you to move up and move on, fearless and do more. Welcome to NCBA. A bank formed as a result of a merger between Commercial Bank of Africa Uganda Limited and AC Bank Uganda Limited. Visit any of our branches or go to ug.ncbagroup.com to find out more. NCBA, go for it. NCBA Bank Uganda Limited is regulated by Bank of Uganda. Customer deposits are protected by the Deposit Protection Fund of Uganda. Standing for office, it is that season again. The elections are fast coming and you need to reach out to your electorate. We at Next Media know that with the campaigns being scientific, you're probably worried about how to approach everything. Come to the Political Command Center today and let's get you sorted. Through our platforms and over 40 media partners across Uganda, we can get you to all your potential voters in an instant. Call 0706. Playing today's hottest oh, hits. Hottest. Next radio. Thanks for listening. We're happy to play big hits. Come on, baby, just dance. 106.1. Next radio. We are happy to play big hits. 106.1. Next radio. Big Talk, hosted by Kanari Mugume. On 106.1. Next radio. Big Talk, hosted by Kanari Mugume. On 106.1 Next Radio.
keep the conversation alive at Next Radio UG, hashtag Young Power. You are listening to 106.1 Next Radio, and this is The Big Talk. My name is Kanar Mgume, and we are live both online and on television and NBS TV. Today on the show, we are looking at the race for Kampala uh, Woman MP. And today in the studios, I have Farida Nambi, who is going to be aspiring for that seat under the NRM ticket. I have Shamim Malende, who is going to be aspiring for the same seat under NUP. I have Dr. Stella Nyanzi, who is going to be coming for the same seat uh, as uh, uh, um, FDC. So we want to understand what are the issues, what are they bringing on the table? And bringing, uh, beginning with you, Farida, let's understand what has Nabila Naga Isempala not done that you want to change? Uh, first of all, I have been working with the women councils even before in my work with women. Uh, women Council is headed by uh, Farida Chibowa, who is a member of my party, NRM, mm. and we have structures in all the divisions of Kampala, going down to the zones or the villages. Mm. What I am seeing is that there is no link between the office of Kampala Woman MP and the woman who sits on the LC1 committees at the village level. Mm. And the women of the Women Council, Nabira was supposed to be the secretary. She was supposed to be the secretary of the Women Council the Secretary General, mm. which position she has never filled. So I have been prior working with the Women Council because I've told you I've already been working with children and women and I just seek to continue what, my what, work. What exactly has in, apart from that, because Kampala has big problems, we have traffic congestion that is killing yes, us. There's, there's, there's poor drainage systems, there's, yes, there's unemployment, sanitation. there's sanitation, yeah. everything. What hasn't she done? Do you feel like she's not occupied this seat as she should have? One, about Nabila, she has been silent. Mm. I can tell you that. Silent and missing. Sorry. Silent and missing. Mm. So basically, what I, I am saying, uh, a woman MP must be felt by the women down there. Women must be feeding you, especially the leaders. So if you're not connecting with the leaders, like the women council, like the, the, the woman, the Nabachara who sits at the village level, mm. then what's your purpose? So one of the things I have to do very quickly is to link my office of the woman MP with the women council and the Nabachara, such that there is information that flows from the grassroots to my office and from my office in terms of lobbying for these women, in terms of having uh, meetings to upgrade their leadership and our service, our collective service to the people. That's what one thing I'm going to do very quickly. The other thing, I started my service in 2003 in the ghettos of Kampala. Ghettos of Kampala, they are becoming bigger. The problems there are becoming deeper. So we need a slum upgrade. We need a slum upgrade with affordable housing units as quickly as possible. Otherwise, that slum will, will push away Kololo even. Mm. And I've seen this from 2003. I've seen it. And I was speaking as um, an executive director of Nambi Children Initiatives to the powers that be. By the way, I've, for, I've, I've founded uh, a platform called the, the, the National Children Thanksgiving Day. It's always annually at Serena for children because I'm a member of the Child Rights Network. To speak to policy that now these places where you see youth with no jobs, how can we revamp them? So that should be part of my legislation. Leg, uh, le legislation in parliament. Okay. Yeah, so slum upgrade market to support the common person to be highly invol involved in economic development of our country. Mm. Market upgrade and maybe more disorganization. You can see on Sunday that women are selling on the streets. There are a lot of street vendors. I work with City Hall. That's why I congratulate uh, my, my, my mentor, uh, the lady now at City Hall. Uh, I know she's going to bring a lot. Who, oh, Dorothy Chisaka? Yes, mm. Madam Kisaka. Uh, she's going to bring a lot of her wealth of experience because actually she's also a person who has been supporting a lot of young children okay. in her different capacities. So I look forward to working with City Hall because they have a mandate and a budget. So I'll be talking to Parliament but also City Hall to up, up, up the game in the city in terms of sanitation should be improved if we improve slums. So those are some of the things okay, that thanks, I want, but also oversight in Parliament. Mm. Uh, we need to look at where money is going and how, why is it going there. See how our causes, we shout very hard to see that the causes 
of that affect the common person are listened to. Okay. Yes. Thanks, Farida. Dr. Stella Nyanzi, talk to us. Many people have heard from so many politicians, and they promise them heaven and earth. When they get to parliament, it becomes, um, um, it, they go silent and they never hear from them. Farida Nambi here just told us that uh, Dabira Nagai has been so silent yeah, that she comes back every after four years to seek for the FDC ticket to run for the seat. Talk to us. Why should the people of Kampala vote you? Right, so I just want to say that as a woman in FDC, I apologize that FDC fronted Nabila Nagai because similar to my opponent in NRM, I don't know what Nabila has done, particularly in her third term. We go to parliament to legislate. Mm. There have been a number of legislations that have been either amended or... Uh, the Constitution has been amended where articles have been removed, and I was hoping that I'd seen Abila active at the front line. Mm. I was embarrassed. I, I wish she was here to hear me saying this straight to her face. I was embarrassed when Honorable Nabila Nagai, during the Toji Kwata Hall debacle in Parliament, was totally upset, and her absence was exaggerated and, and amplified by Mohammed Nsereko, who was asking desperately, Nabila, Ariwa, where is Nabila? Where is Nabila? So unlike Nabila Nagayu of the FDC, mm. I want to enter FDC as a new sharp knife from FDC. Let me just pose you right there. Of women Let me just pose you right there. Who are going to legislate effectively for Ugandans based on the Kampala city. Yes, Canary. These are the words of Dr. Stella Nyanzi about Nabila Nagai. Tell me. Beauty, yes. brains, boldness, mm. what a woman, what a wonder. Mm. Even I find myself staring at the open mouth at this lady. Staring, staring open, open mouth. mouth. Like, if these oh. women politicians are fire, fire, fire. I love this fire. We are what fire. Happened? We are fire. I want you to understand what, what Sarah happened with the beauty, the brains, the boldness. Nabila is a very beautiful woman. What I'm saying is that what happened Nabila with... Nabila is a very beautiful woman. We must mm. not dismiss that. But we don't take beauty to parliament. Mm. We take boldness. I was expecting that her boldness that has been displayed on TV mm. and radio the last few weeks would be there for us as women of Kampala, as women of Uganda, as voters of Uganda. That boldness that I've seen on TV has been missing, missing desperately. And so I apologize. Beauty, brains, what was the other one? Boldness. Boldness. And so when I said, I'm staring open mouth, like, huh, you know, your jaw drops down mm. because you're like, she has so much potential to impact issues around power and exclusion to legislate on behalf of Ugandans. I don't know why she did do it. I would have wanted Nabila to sit here. We invited her. We I would have wanted to ask her, her yes, Honorable yes. MP, what happened? And so you say to me, what am I bringing that's different? Mm. First of all... And by the way, you asked to have coffee with Nabila to be mentored in things of survival yes, as a woman politician in yes, Uganda. Yes, because... And at the same time, she's not done anything for Kampala, so... That is why I was hoping to ask again for that's coffee. That's No, 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 no. I want you to understand the language of irony, mm. the language of sarcasm, mm. the language of okusudia, okuchina, okuwana, okumusika elio. Okay? <laughs> that is what we do. I'm a woman who has mastered language. Mm. When I say to you, oh, Canary, you're so handsome, begin to ask yourself, why is Nyanzi praising me? Mm. What does she want from me? Mm. What does she want to say about my failings? And so sitting down to take coffee with Nabila would be an interesting enterprise for all of us here because we want to go into her seat. Mm. How do we become better? Nabila can teach us. How not to fail as she failed? Mm. How not to underperform? Because her underperformance is scary. Mm. And so in terms of legislation, I want to be there when they are kukwatering the constitution. I want to be there to amend laws. Parliament has produced for us POMA. When the bill was there, the Public Order Management Act, as a member of the opposition, I cannot meet because of the Public, manage, public Order Management Act. Mm. There's a Computer Misuse Act under which I was trained, charged, convicted, and then acquitted, Right? Those bad laws in Parliament, I want to go and change, amend, contribute to the rethinking around the laws for Kampala-based people, but also Ugandans at large, women, men, girls, and boys, okay? One of the things I want to go, because I have a big mouth, Shamim was telling the world about my big mouth. Some people call it yapping. I call it articulating those issues that have to be articulated. I call it advocacy. I call it activism with the mouth. Because the words we speak are mightier than the guns they use against us. So I'm going to take my big mouth to parliament to cause change for that LDU beaten woman. We 
Why was Nabila when the LDUs were smashing us during COVID-19 times? During COVID-19, I was expecting that our members of parliament would show up for us. Yeah. Where was Nabila when women were sleeping in the markets? With, they were menstruating. And there was no toilet or a place to put their sanitary pads. Where was Nabila Naga Isenta Mu? When Boda Boda men were crying for survival, when we were beating our pots and pans as forces, yeah, United Forces of Change, People Power and FDC, People's Government and FDC, where was Nabila Sip to beat the pans with all of us hungry Ugandans? Because she's an opposition fronted member of parliament. And so I want to go to Parliament and make a difference for women who are oppressed, for traders in the market, taxes, the taxation issue, the arcade issue. Yeah. She said she's not a protester. I'm a protester because in the opposition we are powerless. And so I make protest placards to speak truth to power. I will be speaking truth to power on behalf of the oppressed in Kampala. Oversight. Oversight is an important role. Budgets have been passed when the bill was in Parliament. Supplementary budgets. I didn't hear her voice. What was Nabila doing? I will go and over, you know, offer oversight in such a way that the presence of the Kampala woman in peace will be felt in Parliament. When they bring their budgets, they'll know Nyanzi will be there. She will have read those budgets. How could Matia, eh? Minister, the, the, the economy has gone a few. How could he present that budget? And all the members of Parliament were sleeping, accepting it. I will be the person who is going to... If, if parliament is a phone, I'm the charger. If parliament is a school, I'm the chibok. If parliament is a platform, I'm going to walk on that platform in every way possible. And so I'm going to parliament to make changes for those of us who are oppressed, for traders, for women, for, tr for you know, kidnapped women who died. How do we explain to their orphans that women were kidnapped? Okay. We had legislators who were silent, silent until the issue affected Susan Magara of their class. So those of us who don't have access to that class of power, I want to represent our issues. What did Nabila do when the social media tax and the mobile money tax were floated in, in parliament, right? And so I want to go to parliament and first of all legislate on behalf of Ugandans, particularly those of us who don't have access to power. The, Woman member of parliament position is a quarter based on affirmative action. Mm. Nabila totally delegitimized the need to go and run as women. I want to go and put relevance in the quarter for women. There are a few women in parliament who are working under UOPA, Uganda Women Parliamentarians Association, and we see their effect. But I want to build the fire of those women who are working for, me for people of Uganda. Um, and make relevant the woman quarter because the discussions now around the importance of affirmative action. Those who want to take the seat away from us are beginning to ask, hey, is this really relevant? Because these women get to parliament and they sleep. Okay. They can be so bought. As a woman, uh, I'm member going of parliament. not to be bought. to clarify. Hey, clarifying. Okay, go on. Stella says, you said mm. you're not a protester. That I don't protest. I can't protest to a service, to an actual service being delivered. Mm. I was meaning being that Stella, you never brought here M7. Having a poster to say M7 must go. M7 committed treason to come into power. He committed treason. Fine, but the he thing is He committed treason. They were sitting government. Let's listen to our submission. Exactly. But he committed what treason. Submitting, it is better to offer, Kampala's people are tired of empty protests of just putting up placards. And that's why the last protest that Those was called by, 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 uh, by, by, no, no, I'm no, not this, no, I'm dissing protest, empty protests. Protest, but I distance myself from empty protests. Good. I am not a and person who organizes an empty protest service. No, what is the alternative? People what is need the alternative? an actual service. What is, what is the alternative? Mm. Uh, actually, before I even go to what is the alternative? Big mouth. Everywhere possible in uh, I Stella's, um, that I wish and that I big wish. mouth and everywhere possible where you can uh, say anything, you can be indisciplined as a leader is not also a good way. Oh, come on, Do you understand? Come on, come on. Enemies, it's also, also a good way because what will hey. it be? No, no, no. What no, will no, it no, no. You can't tell me how to speak. Where is, your obscenity? Where is your obscenity? 
You have talked to where Dr. Is Bez, the, who is your obscenity? boss in your party. Where he is the obscenity? I Dr. want you to Bezzi. quote it. Quote it. Quote Let me quote some obscenity. Yes. How many women do you sleep with? You can't get that. What is obscene about you that? Clearly how many men have you slept with? with? Women. But Farid, how many men she have you slept with? Dr. <laughs> We so understand. So we need leadership. What am I talking about? We need leadership oh. that is disciplined. That is no, 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 no. This is not that hypocrisy. Is if you can speak to Dr. VCJ, who is the head of your party? Farida, Farida, Farida. But Dr. VCJ is not the head of FDC. Okay, he, he, he is Farida. one of the leaders mm. of that, and founders of that party. Mm. So, okay. so, so, if, so what am I say, saying? Mm. I'm saying As that let's be you. disciplined. Mm. I'm saying let's be moral. She is from the Mbogo clan. Mm. So, yeah? You so. cannot continue, not even actually Dr. VCJ. <laughs> She has defamed the mother of the president oh before, God. and that was the case. Can Wasn't they it they the case? Okay. So, 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 so. Come back on this one. Oh, okay. So, I'm, I'm, have to I'm, I'm, she is actually, making strong allegations that have to be contested. She has to prove okay. to me first of all. Okay. So, it's more to those that I move on to Shamim. I want to, I want to say very quickly that two, 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 two issues. One, do not let a hypocrite who organized a hijra using fake visas for women. Okay. She used the hijra. A Muslim pilgrimage called for women to collect their money. This woman is a liar and a mufere. No, be for I you know not. what you did. I am not. No, 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 no. I am a leader of the Muslim women. I gave her an opportunity women. to speak. I am the a fake visas when I these women that? got to the I airport. That? I have a cousin ah, who please. was part of the envoy. Uh, no, so the fake visas me. that she offered in the name of the me. pilgrimage, a Muslim no, woman no, no, no. doing this to fellow Muslims. No. So if we talk about indiscipline, is, what is dishonesty? Oh, oh, did, did, did I want to talk secondly about my language. My language when I ask a leader about his sexuality, right it is important for us. No I am a feminist. You don't even know about I have talked about I have fake visas. Go and investigate. Fake go and investigate. Give proof. She got How do they go with fake visas? These women got to the airport. You know what happened? No, 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 no. Okay, so if we're talking about indiscipline, I speak truth to power. Who is your I speak to truth with discipline. I have put this here. We need you have women not no, 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 no. Why are you discipline? Where what has children? your discipline listen done for us? I, I think okay, the second I issue I want to talk about. Okay, I'm listen. a fiduciary to my service. The second issue. Okay, I've, I I've, 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 Leaders, we are not history. You cannot history. live in a glass house and throw stones. We know about you, no. Farida. You say you that I am. She talk. says I'm indecent. I am obscene. I talk to Jesus. Tell me something new. Let me I am you. not going to allow my dictate the dictator of this country, my oppressor, and his mouthpieces in the form of women such as this one who stand in NRM to tell me how to engage in this war. I will use sharp words. I will use fiery but words. I will use woman. language. I am a Nalongo. <laughs> I have privilege over and above you. I will also tell you very quickly leader. that I'm not a silent woman. As a Muganda woman, you know, uh, you say I'm from the Buffalo clan. We are the only clan that touches the body of I, the Kabaka. Your clan cannot. Okay. Weka Kabaka. That makes me totally above you. I touch My the body of the Kabaka. Leaders, if I can touch the Kabaka, leaders, why would it touch the Okay, so no, 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 women no. have so ladies. Women ladies have. Must not be subservient. Ladies, ladies. All the tools in the assets. Ladies, I have turned both uh, your mics off because we're doing a disservice when we speak at the same time, and the viewer and, and the viewer does not get exactly what the point is. So I beg that when one is speaking, then the other must listen. Or, I was or, 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 no, no, no. But it's exactly what we're doing now. It's exactly what you're doing. So back to the issues. Dr. Stella Nyanz, yes. you, you will respond to those. And sure. there's always time. We have about an hour to go. You respond to those things. But Dr. Stella Nyanz, back to the issues I asked. Um, uh, you are at the, you're going to be um, at the center or you're aspiring to be at the center of policy formulation. What are those laws that you think should be changed to benefit the common person, the common woman here in Kampala? Let's begin with those. Right, so I just want to say very quickly that uh, what you put as a disclaimer for my conduct in studio must be challenged because when she spoke, I said 
she has made strong allegations that I want to respond to. Mm. While I was responding to them, she came with rebuttals. So I think the rules have to be directed to her. You talked about what legislations need reform. Mm. I think that first of all, parliament has to be redeemed. It was in our parliament that the constitution was raped, right, by the executive and important articles that are safeguards against abuse of power from the executive branch of government were removed. So the age limit, the term limit, and very many other articles were removed. I think it's important that um, parliament either lobbies or ushers into, uh, ushers in a moment of reclaiming those articles for Ugandans, reclaiming the constitution back to ourselves. I want to be part of that process. They say big mouth. I want to bring my big mouth towards that cause. Mm. In the next regime, 2021-2026, I think we do a disservice to ourselves if we allow the residue coming from rep to, to remain, okay? There are bills that I'm really interested in promoting in parliament, but you asked what legislation is wrong. I want to respond to your exact question. I mentioned the Public Order Management Act. We know why as opposition members we can no longer congregate because of articles within, um, because of sections within the uh, Public Order Management Act. There are laws such as the Computer Misuse Act under which I was um, arrested, charged, tried, convicted, and I think that a number of us who cannot operate in public space take to social media and the public media to express ourselves, to express dissidence, to express dissent, and to express strong criticism against the current regime. Regulating computer use in very ambiguous, amorphous, and overly broad ways is doing a disservice because it closes down freedom of expression, but also civil and political space to engage. Because I was a prisoner, the Prisons Act is dear to me. There's a lot of torture, there's a lot of abuse of human rights and violations of prisoners, both men and women, that is going on, and that was allowed by the colonial uh, ingredients of the Prisons Act. And so I'm very interested in amending, <laughs> removing abusive clauses within the Prisons Act. I want to also talk about the Which divorce. Which ones are abusive? There's a number of, so, so, so corporal punishment, for example, was removed by an amendment of parliament, mm. but corporal punishment continues, okay? I was denied access to my medical information when I had a miscarriage in prison, and that is legal using the Prison Act. You have to go through a number of uh, obstacles to getting access to your own medical information as a prisoner. So I cannot even get post-abortive care today because my medical history is retained by the prison services. I mm. can't get access to it. And there are very many prohibitive rules, regulations, articles, really colonial around respectability, but overly giving power to prison wardresses to beat up, punish. What happens in solitary confinement is not regulated by the laws of Uganda. Okay, And so one cannot even sue the prison because there is no law upon which to base. Um, I was talking about the divorce and marriage bill, which is very dear to my heart. It has been in parliament for a long <laughs> time, like for donkey's years. And it will have women members of parliament. Mm. And so there are pieces of legislation that I think are totally abusive. The social media act, the OTT tax act, the, mo the, 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 mo you know, the rules, the laws providing for that. I think there also silences the KCCA authority is given permission and leeway to criminalize poverty. And so I was in prison with women who were arrested for just selling mangoes. Men who were arrested because they were working as hawkers. Laws such as the rogue and vagabond, the, the provision in the penal code, I think the penal code must be revisited. Um, and so I think that pa parliament offers for me as a scholar, who was based in the School of Law for a long time doing research, an opportunity to interrogate the laws that are existent, but also to generate new bills. Mm. So I, one, of, one of the things I've been doing research on is what committees in parliament was Nabila a member of? What private members' bills did she bring? Did she table? How many times did she seek leave 
from the Speaker of Parliament to go and work on a private member's bill. And so unlike my sister, whose answers I don't know, I would like her to come and tell me what she did, because I really don't know what Nabila did for us in Parliament. Mm -hmm. I would like to be actively involved in decriminalizing poverty. Kampala has a number of poor people, the traders, the market women, the market owners, but the men, informal sector. But the laws that exist criminalize their activities. Why? I mean, the free zone, free border border zone, I have a problem with that. You know, gentrification of the city is based on very classist terms where the wealthy don't want the poor invading their spaces. And so the laws that shut out and criminalize and penalize hardworking poor people huh, must be revisited and we need to table new bills that cater for poor people. Okay. Um, yeah, I was going to talk about the opposition. Protection of the opposition, protection of dissidents, protection. So freedom of expression has to be strengthened using law, right? Especially when those of us who speak, speak not to praise the regime, but to criticize. And so I, I need special provisions provided, maybe a law, maybe an amendment to the existent laws, emphasizing freedom of expression, freedom of conscience, even to critique, even to do what she does, to be rude. Because that is the extent of freedom of expression. Okay, so the uh, parliament has the provision of a whole office of leader of opposition. Yes. Do you think that that has helped in any way? It also, um, the constitution also gives powers, the electoral uh, commission, to allow the opposition to actively participate in the politics of Uganda. Not just that, government also gives money to political parties that are registered um, and, and have representation in parliament. Do you think that that has been enough? Right, so those are four questions, Canary. Um, the leader of opposition position, I celebrate, because for a long time it's been dominated by my party, Forum for Democratic Change. I want to say that in terms of the work of Winnie Kiza, the outgoing before um, the current leader of opposition, we saw the rise to power of an eloquent, articulate woman member of parliament. We saw what it means to lobby and organize caucuses around issues and organize, mobilize uh, even people in the NRM to our side. And so the, 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 what, what Winnie Chiza was able to achieve for us in parliament as members of opposition must be celebrated, mm. right? Your question was, is it a relevant seat, right? Like, like, is it useful to have a little of opposition seat? I think it's important because when it's constitutional, it's provided for in our constitution, um, I want to say that the leader of opposition many times is there to give an alternative perspective on every issue brought into parliament. And whether she speaks as herself or she speaks through others, she's often advised by technocrats and those sitting on other uh, committees in parliament, but also by ministry experts. Yeah? There, there are ministers who come and uh, their technocrats come with them to advise about issues. I think it's important to always have an alternative position, particularly when we are not in government. Okay. Right? So um, yes. You're, you're going to respond to the rest uh, later. Let me give time to Shamim Malende. Shamim, speak to us about your plans for Kampala. Yeah, uh, first and foremost, uh, Kanri, uh, I want to categorically state it here that uh, I'm not going to discuss personalities here. So issues to do with Nabila, the only thing I can tell the nation is that unlike my comrades here, I have had opportunity to interact with her uh, already and uh, what I learned from her, I, I wanted to find out the challenges that she faced or that she has been facing or that she's facing as the woman member of parliament so that I can best equip myself when I take over that seat in 2021. And I learned that one of the mo major challenges that she has faced is about working under the Museveni regime. Even if you have the best manifesto, even if my sisters here have the best manifesto or my mom's here, you cannot implement, you wait, you, you wait. Even if you have your own, you have the best message and you're going to implement, you, you have your good policies that you want to implement and to deliver to the people of Kampala district. Mm -hmm. There is no way you can implement it alone. You need other people. First, you need fellow members, members of parliament. You need fellow leaders. You need a regime that is interested 
in ensuring that your manifesto is implemented or your policy, your alternatives are implemented. So that is another thing. That is why I'm running for this position as a woman member of parliament to work in Chagulanyi's government in 2021 because I know that by 2021, Museven is not going to be the president of the Republic of Uganda. It will be Honorable Robert Chagulanyi Sentamu in State House. That is why uh, the difference with me is that I am not coming to parliament in 2021 to fight. Wait. I'm not coming to parliament in 2021 to fight. I'm coming to deliver service because I believe that the regime will have changed and Chagulani will be president. That is the first point. Then secondly, mm. I'm also participating in this election to be part of changing mindsets and provide a new kind of leadership that puts our people first. Mm. Yeah? A leadership that is going to do away with transactional system of governance. Mfunirawa. Yeah? And replace it with a system based or a leadership that is based on values. Mm. I want to be part of that leadership that allows peaceful transition of power at all levels. I want to be part of that leadership that is inclusive, that has integrity, and that is reliable. And I want to be part of that leadership that respects and upholds the constitution, respect for the rule of law and democracy, plus respecting people's rights. So that is basically why I'm participating in this election. And I'm telling you that that is the kind of leadership that Chagulang is going to offer in 2021 when he becomes president. Uh, and another thing, I'm not coming to parliament uh, just to offer myself for, for in, just to participate in unelective politics. For us, we believe this is a revolution. I, I, I'm very, uh, okay, they have a right to their opinion, but for us we are in a revolution. This Chagulan generation is looking at a revolution because Ugandans have already sent opposition members of parliament so many times and they, they don't seem to see the results. So all Ugandans are focused at changing the top leadership and that is where their focus is. It is actually a disappointment when they he listen to us and we are just fighting for these petty, petty positions. So we should put our country first. We should put all Ugandans first. We should look at the top position first. And then w our other interests can come afterwards. And I'm coming to expound service that I'm already giving. As you know, or if I may tell you, I have already been providing free legal services in my law family and company advocates to people power supporters, to oppressed Ugandans. Uh, recently, we, we, we just won the Charenga Extra Concert case, which, was, uh, 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 which had the impact of bringing Babuan back on stage. And we believe that when uh, the COVID, this whole COVID thing is over, he'll be back and, uh, and, and to, to perform on stage. Uh, the Bajo case that was brought against him for offensive communication, we successfully won. You, you so, so what we are looking at, I'm coming to expound, to expand the service, to add a political voice to the legal voice. Because as a lawyer, I have had exposure, I have had, had experiences, and I have known, and I know that sometimes the law is not enough to okay. help. So talk to us about the policy alternatives you talked about earlier. Yes. What, what, what are you bringing to Parliament? Yes. Uh, first and foremost, the most important thing to, in Parliament is if you're to deliver to give results to the people of Kampala. You must first know first how is Kampala run, what are the laws governing it, who are the stakeholders in Kampala, which categories of people work in Kampala, who are those people that reside there. If you want to help them, where are you supposed to go? Which other leaders are in Kampala? Because you're not going to work alone. Then you have to also analyze these different groups like my, my comrade talked about about it. For example, I'm going to, to give an example of the hawkers and, 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 and the street vendors. Yeah, I have appeared several times for them in courts uh, giving pro bono services. And the problem, they are always arrested and imprisoned for not having maybe hawkers licenses or street vendors license. But you'll find that when you go to the Kampara, uh, to the KCCA, the authority, you'll find that there's actually no, no, no specific office handling the issue of, uh, of, of giving them the licenses. So you see that th these people are actually being arrested, but the system is not yet set up. You, so you, when you, you go there... You, you want women who vend uh, food on the street to be given licenses? That is what the law under which they arrest them says, that they should be having street vendors' licenses. And now when they find them, they, they tell you, you are on the street, you don't have a license, but again, she has nowhere to run even to get the license. So these are the kind of things that we are supposed to talk about these are these kind of things that we are supposed to address okay and another thing mm. we must also address like I'm, I'm a legal person i've been in the justice system 
I'm seeing there's a, a very big dif a, a very big problem with the way the justice system works, basically. Uh, the case backlogs, uh, what offenses, wh what offense should take someone to prison? Yeah. If, oh, for example, you have found a hawker, okay, in the wrong place, does it warranty you or the, that government to, uh, to send that person to prison? Can't we think of other alternatives? For example, caution, uh, mediation, things like that. Mm. Because this is not a person who has murdered all, all, all the So we have a lot to do about the different laws. Um, uh, in Parliament, of course, uh, when I go to Parliament, first and an, uh, another thing is that um, the laws are repressive. The bureaucracy is too much. You, you, someone gives you instructions eh, to defend a land matter or to file a suit for a land matter, land matter and you're supposed to get a temporary injunction to refrain, eh, to restrain any person from selling it. But because the laws are bogus, you, you file the, the suit, then you have to file another application to, to maintain the status quo. Then you file another interim application to maintain again the status quo. All those applications must be served. By the time you go to serve, the person has broken the, another, uh, the other, the, the other uh, person's house, and you know, and they say there's no status quo to maintain. So we need to change those laws. The bureaucracy. We must reduce on the bureaucracy by working on our laws. Okay. The Thanks, police. Shamim. We now take a short break, but let us know what you think about uh, the race for woman MP here in Kampala. Let us know uh, what. What you think that uh, the ladies here in the studios should respond to our hashtag on Twitter is NXT Big Talk. Next Big Talk is the hashtag on Twitter that we're using. We are live both online and on television on NBS TV. The Big Talk resumes in just a bit, but first a short commercial break. Good morning. We are happy to play Big Hits. 106.1 Next Radio Dreams They are the sparks that are meant to light the embers of success and ambition But many of us just dream of what could be, will be, might be or should be But it's time we made the transition from possibility to reality and choose to be be the dreamer that became the achiever, the one that turned the hater into the believer and chose to be the best that they could be. So to the farmer, the trader, the corporate, the vendor, the hustler or big spender, there's nothing that you can't be. So let's find new ways to make your dreams possible because with Stan Big Bank, it can be. Stan Big Bank is regulated by the Bank of Uganda and customer deposits are protected by the Deposit Protection Fund. Standing for office, it is that season again. The elections are fast coming and you need to reach out to your electorate. We at Next Media know that with the campaigns being scientific, you're probably worried about how to approach everything. Come to the Political Command Center today and let's get you sorted. Through our platforms and over 40 media partners across Uganda, we can get you to all your potential voters in an instant. Call 0707-730-641 to book your slot today. NBS, your political command center. Imagine your life without connection. Every change comes with new challenges and opportunities. So now is the time for a new normal. New habits, new ways of communicating your love, needs, and ambitions. Africa makes it possible. Staying apart, together, with one heart. Wash your hands very well. Wash them with soap and water Avoid getting nasty diseases Save your money by washing your hands Wash your hands and say Wash your hands and say Wash them before you eat Wash your hands and say Wash after cleaning the baby Wash your hands and say Wash after feasting the latrine Wash your hands and say Helps you avoid diseases Save your money by washing your hands Wash before feeding the baby. 
Wash your hands with soap and water before feeding the baby, after cleaning the baby's bottom, before eating and after visiting the latrine. To save yourself and your family from making unnecessary hospital trips, spending more money and losing time. This message is brought to you by Minister of War. Next Radio. Nothing else but big hits. 106.1. Big Talk, hosted by Kanari Mugume on 106.1 Next Radio. Keep the conversation alive at Next Radio UG, hashtag Young Power. 106.1 Next Radio, this is The Big Talk. My name is Kanaram Gume. Today we're looking at the race for woman MP for Kampala. Today in the studios, I have Farida Nambi coming to you uh, to ask for your vote if you are a voter here in Kampala on an NRM ticket. I have Shamim Malende who is going to uh, be aspiring for the same seat but on NUP ticket and then Dr. Stella Nyanzi on the FDC ticket. Talk to us. Let us know what you think about uh, the debate and if there are any questions that you would like to pose to the ladies in the studios. Shami Malende, let's uh, give you more time to talk to us about your manifesto for Kampala. Actually, uh, another thing I wanted to, to, to address is that uh, we are not supposed to limit yeah, uh, the role of an MP to his or her constituency because the constitutional mandate of a member of parliament is at national level mm. yeah uh, because when uh, a bad law is passed in parliament it affects all ugandans yeah including those in kampala and in the diaspora so uh, uh, I'm, I'm coming as an mp knowing that uh, yes i represent my constituents but the matters that are going to be deliberated in parliament and the laws that are going to be passed are going to be affecting all ugandans uh, and another thing is that uh, uh, the issues that Ugandans here and in the diaspora want uh, the Chagulani government to address in 2021 uh, are the same issues that actually affect the people of Kampala and, 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 and everywhere. Uh, and, and these issues are, uh, uh, range from bad governance. We have to address issues of bad governance. Uh, we have to address issues of uh, disrespect for the constitution, democracy, and the rule of law. Mm. We have to address issues of unfavorable working conditions. Uh, as you can see in the city so far, uh, the transport sector, uh, you know, they practically, have, they practically actually have to beg to earn a living in the city. Uh, we, you see, I've already talked about the hawkers and the street vendors. We have people that operate in arcades up to now. There is nothing that has actually th that this regime has put in place to ensure that uh, uh, they recapitalize or they assist them with, uh, for example, the pending issues on rent. Uh, traders have been crying fall over the uh, tenant uh, landlord tenant law, and, and 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 you know that issue has not been addressed. Mm. People are paying rent in dollars, and it is very absurd. So you know there is so much when you address the when you look at issues of high taxation, uh, uh, people bringing their, their, their items from abroad and you know the taxation is too high at the border sometimes the items are actually confiscated and at times they are sold off to government uh, to government officials because someone did not pay maybe a tax so we are thinking i'm thinking that why can't we as members of parliament in the 2021 uh, government uh, address some of these issues and say can't we allow these traders maybe to bring in their items or goods maybe they can sell after maybe pay, maybe they pay substantial deposit but then they take their items and sell and then they pay back mm. why is it that the traders in kampala and the traders in uganda are still crying for over foreigners who are actually dealing in the items that we are supposed to be selling as ugandans why are they being favored they are being given the foreigners being given tax holidays as opposed to ugandans these are some of the issues that as members of parliament we are supposed to address and these are sh issues that go to the national level because they affect not only the people of Uganda or not only the people of Kampala, but the people of Uganda at large. So that is why I told you, even from the onset, that when I'm addressing issues affecting Kampala, I'm addressing issues at a national level. And that is why, by the way, for your information, the position of a woman member of parliament, Kampala district, is a very central dispute position. And that is why it is very important for a woman member of Kampala to know under what regime or under what government he, she intends to operate. Mm. Because you want to work for the people. 
and you know you, you want to work for the people so you must be able to ensure that you implement what you want to do for the people we should not yeah we should get away uh in nope uh this is what we have developed we are saying that we want to we, we, we and i think our principal is already doing it we are getting away from you know we are doing less talk and more action. We want to be more action oriented in 2021 than talking. Uh, that's why talking in the 2021 parliament is not going to be enough. We, we may not need a big mouth in parliament in 2021 because we need, we need people who are going to address issues. Issues that, uh, uh, that, uh, that, you know, that, 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 are going, that are affecting the oppressed Ugandans. It is not just about talking, talking, talking. You may talk, but at the end of the day, what is the result of your talk? So you, these Ugandans may want an aggressive and assertive woman member of parliament for Kampala. Mm. But at the end of the day, they are more interested in providing solutions to their problems. Because their problems are real. This is not drama. People are out of jobs. People are crying everywhere. Human rights are everywhere. People have been murdered. You know? So they need leaders who are going to feel that pinch and go ahead to saying how they provide solutions. Not just talking. Uh, and then another thing. That is why in the people power movement or in the NOP national unity platform we focus on solutions they arrest uh, a comrade of uh, dr selanias also my comrade mosiri david shamemba is up to the task we go we get him out of jail that is solution now even if i lament when mosiri david is still in jail Obizonto, Ojiradichiwa, and I lament and I say it is bad, it is bad. But I'm not providing solutions at the end of the day. Yes, I have talked, mm. but there's no solution. So we are focusing more on solutions. Then, uh, we, we, you know, what has this government done? What has this government done about, you know, so many, the business committee has lost properties. We've had the fires everywhere, parkyard. How has this government contributed to? redeeming or to recap giving them uh, more capital to ensure that they resume business people are crying what is being done at Sh where shimon demonstration school used to be mm. who is who is owning that place remember we saw the ucb at one dollar how did we gain as a country those are questions that we're supposed to ask that is why for us we are coming to work in Chagulani's government in 2021 because we know this is the generation that is going to deal with all those problems this the, 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 the our comrades have been here they have tried their best and they have failed we respect them but we are saying let's work together under the Chagulani generation 2021 to address all these issues by the way Nambi, we respect president Museveni yeah. we res that is why for us we, we even, even when you're in our but you know, you, you, you are change sick and you're saying, yes, respect Museven enough to tell him to retire and give power peacefully. Yeah, because that is the start of everything. It is the beginning. That is why even our fellow uh, opposition party, our op opposition members, we are telling them, if you have served in a political position, for God's sake, beyond the two terms, but you, for you don't want to leave that position. For God's sake, is that, is that setting a good precedent? So these are issues. What I'm trying to tell you is that I don't want to narrow my mind to only Kampala district. I'm not here to fight for a political position, a woman, a woman empress. I'm looking at the broader picture because I know that when I'm voted into parliament as the woman member of parliament, my role is going to be national. It is going to, and it is not going to be limited to, wi limited to women and girls. Yeah, mm. it is not limited to women and girls. It is inclusive. It is it it is very central and it is very key. Uh, and maybe another thing that I want to, to to talk about. I do not want to repeat myself. Oh, because these are issues that even a P two kid knows. The poor health system, the infrastructure. I don't want to read go ab go into that. But personally, what I can pledge to the people of Uganda and the people of Kampala, including uh, uh, my, my my comrade here, Dr. Sela Nyanzi, uh, because she has been a victim of. Uh, you know torture before mm. uh, pro bono services are available and I'm willing and I am ready and I have done it before and I still do it okay. to give these pro bono services to everyone that needs help that is a victim of torture and human rights violations thanks Let Shaleen. let's uh, okay. okay let's uh, move on to Farida Farida your party has failed look at the problems of Kampala one would seek to know why would anyone vote NRM again because that's a ticket you are coming under now, before I go into that, I would like to uh, clear the air about the hijab. I'm the president of the Union of Muslim Women. Mm. I've been here for seven years. I started as a secretary general under Honorable Rukaya Nakadama Isanga under the Ministry of Jena. We've been taking Muslims, and my officers just sent me the number. They are now about 
a hundred and three Muslims that have gone for hijjah. It's one of the things that we do because it's a pillar of Islam. We do a lot of other things for the Muslim community and I'm in touch for all, with all the Muslim leadership. So if there's anyone who came under the Union of Muslim Women and need not go for hijjah, uh, they can bring it to my attention. But as, as far as we are, our office is concerned, everybody went for, has gone for hijab because we don't take only for one year. We've been taking for seven years in a row. So you're saying that the so allegations by Dr. Stelians no, are false? It's, it's, it's really false. So mm. if anyone did not go, I beg to bring it to my attention and my office will, is, is ready to, to, to deal with it. And okay. we don't offer visas. Visas, mm. we, get it, uh, we get them from the Saudi Arabian uh, embassy here in Kampala. So there is no way we, we, my office can issue fake visas to people going for hijab. We get them from the uh, uh, Saudi Arabians. So if there is anyone with a fake visa from the Union of Muslim Women, they can bring it to our attention because I've received information from the office that according to them, there is no one. Now, I would like to also say that um, Kampala has got a toll of its problems. Mm. And I'm not new in the service of Kampala for both children and women. Uh, we have issues with the, with the artisan subsector, for instance, garages, welders, carpenters. NRM, uh, I would proudly say, under the leadership of President Museveni, has introduced programs that have revitalized the energy for NRM in this city. We have the women and youth skilling program that is still going on uh, under uh, the Office of State House. We have the ghetto initiative. Actually, I was so happy about that because I've been serving in the ghetto. And finally, His Excellency's attention was drawn to the ghetto. Which so one there? When he went around the street, no, 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 not money. going there, mm. but there are ghetto initiatives taking place. If they find that uh, they've introduced uh, skillings to young uh, groups of, uh, of, of men and women uh, into using a small piece of land in agribusiness, uh, performers in uh, performing arts, they're being trained and uh, help to further their talents. Mm. They are being given capital under the microfinance support center. Uh, spearheaded by uh, Honorable Kasolo. So I am very proud of the attention being given to Kampala right now. And I know that Canary, my party, NRM, is very interested to do whatever it takes to improve. I acknowledge that sanitation, I mean, sanitation is there. Yeah, but this and attention, employment of the youth. This attention always comes uh, almost a year to the elections. Yes. Wh wh where is NRM uh, the rest of the years? Uh, the rest of the years, I would say that they've been doing other things because the microfinance support center, if you looked at that program, mm. it has started four years ago, microfinance support center, to support ghetto, ghetto uh, dwellers. These are youth, and they are there, and we can take your cameras there. Government has supported. So for the issue of skating Uganda, it's three years old. It's not close to our election. I'm very happy, by the way, and that's what affirmed my interest to stand proudly as an NRM member, because my president, my party chairman, is interested to support this place, and he has really, really pumped a lot of resources. There are so many groups, they're like, uh, I don't know, and he's giving them a huge capital to start like garages, like welders. You've seen this. Mm. You are news people, you've been following him. So in his capacity, I say that he, he has tried uh, to to, to reduce the issues that are affecting, especially with employment, with skilling, uh, with supporting the woman, because many of those girls, actually, he has even given capital. They skill you and give you capital. They may not give you the whole million, but they give you like 500,000. Mm. So you're able to start something. So I am very proud with the achievements that have been registered by my party uh, under the leadership of President Museveni for the people of Kampala. And those are still ongoing. Okay. Yeah. Dr. Sela um, uh, you, you still wanted to explain more on, uh, first of all, she has said oh, that the allegations are false. Uh, yes, you wanted? Yes, I want to add just one little thing before uh, Sela. Um, I want to promise the people of Kampala that I, ha I, I am going to continue 
with whichever way they've seen me serving. I've served the women, the youth, the children, uh, and I'm going to continue. But even what I bring to this table that is unique to me is that I know these power people. So I'll act like a bridge. They'll not be questioning whether they are, their voice is being, we are knocking on the doors of power. I'll knock because where I'm knocking, they know me and I know them. So there is, there is no way that we will not be able to deliver actual service. I'm very interested. I've been delivering actual service in whichever spheres I choose in my mandate as Nambi Farida, Executive Director of Nambi Children Initiatives and the President of the Union of Muslim Women. And I know I have witnesses, I have beneficiaries to this service, and I'll continue to be the bridge. Now, with their mandate, why I seek their mandate is because I'll be speaking to this power, knocking on doors where people know me and I know them. So they'll not be like, uh, my letter failed to get there or whatever. So I'll act at their bridge. They can use me. So it's not a bad thing. Mm. They can use me. I'll be there for them. Continue to be there for them because I'm sure they have seen me in service. Okay, Dr. Stella Nyanzi. Um, so FDC has recently seen members of parliament leave mm -hmm. uh, the party and join other political parties. Are you worried that the party whose flag you're going to carry is shrinking? No. So one of the things I hope to be doing using uh, this presentation today, this engagement, is to attract more people to FDC because FDC is a party that has groomed me. Um, I will not, for example, try to underestimate the importance of big mouth power. Because when we go to parliament, we go to parliament to talk. Rebecca Kadaga, honorable speaker of parliament, has been at pains to explain to us that the word parliament comes from a French word parler. Okay? So we go to parliament to talk, to debate, our work as parliamentarians most of the time, if it's lobbying, if it's commenting about budgeting, ATC, ATC, giving oversight, is about debating in parliament. And so I just want to first say that in FDC we have been trained to talk defiantly to those who abuse power. And so when somebody says that um, we don't need big mouth power, look, she is, she is praising a party president, a presidential candidate of MOOP, whose most effective work so far has been mouth power. When we hold the microphone and sing, that is big mouth power. And so I want to say very quickly to my sister that the big mouth is important in parliament, particularly in parliament, mm. because Farida says she wants to offer services. We don't go to parliament to offer services. We can be bridging gaps. But the mentality that NRM has planted and sown and harvested in its members is that we are there to dish out services as members of parliament. So the ambulances, the going to funerals, the paying school fees have become a burden to members of NRM and those who decide to copy them blindly. And we forget and lose ourselves as parliamentarians. Mm. And so I'm not worried about people leaving FDC. People are leaving all the other parties, okay? People who we thought were going to be in loop after people power have gone to parties. People we thought were in NRM are departing from NRM. I think that that is what mature politics calls for. It is free entry, free exit. I'm excited because there are gaps in FDC. One of the reasons why I can't leave FDC is because my eye is on the Women's League. Mm. I plan to go and do things as a member of parliament, cultivate, grow my party. The questions that we're asking, look, for example, if my brain is utilized in my party FDC, will cover those gaps. We can use our brains to think for our political parties. And so I'm expecting that a lawyer, for example, who's proud to tell us she's also offering Chagulani Center Mu pro bono services, must be able to work on their constitution and give answers to us. And so I'm not worried about FDC. In fact, I'm very excited that a new generation, a new crop of leaders is going to occupy those spaces that people are forsaking. And so for FDC, there are people who say to me, but Stella, I was in people power. I don't want to join MOOP because I don't understand it. Can I come to FDC? And I said to them, do you have a thousand shillings? Let me take you to my party. They may never be presented on TV, but we are weaning souls steadily. Because there are those who want the foundation of a party whose ideology nobody questions, right? And so I want to enter parliament using the FDC card 
because I think that we have, we have showcased what it means to have a parliamentarian working for the people, using the opposition front, sitting on the opposition front, saying nay. All the A say A, we are like, mm. all the nay said nay, nay. Because those who go before me in my party have laid a good foundation. I have comrades in, in parliament who have on the FDC ticket who are doing amazing things in parliament. And so about the Kampala question, um, entering on the FDC ticket, I enter boldly, unafraid. I have work to do for the party. I have positions of power to grab in my party. Okay? I could run for the leader of opposition. When I get there, it's a seat taken by a woman in my party, especially if we work to get many members of parliament in there on our ticket. Why can't I be speaker of parliament, for example? Uh, if we are the majority in there, why can't I be speaker of parliament? But even if another party has the majority members there, I plan to lobby this thing they're underplaying, this big mouth power. Big Mouth has made so many changes. I can go and convince NRM members to vote for me. I had people pleading for Honorable Gadaga Rebecca to stay in power. Members of FDC lobbying for her to stay in power. When I enter power and I contest for Speaker of Parliament, I will take her seat. So Rebecca Gadaga, Honorable Madam, I'm coming for your seat when I enter Parliament. Because you know what? I'm sure that Honorable Rebecca Gadaga would be proud to entrust that chair to me because she knows what sort of woman leader I am. I go into uh, parliament on the FDC ticket, first of all, to clean up the rot in parliament. Okay? There's a small body of members of parliament who are doing what they're supposed to do. There are so many other service dishes who are using their positions of power to seduce voters. They get derailed, like my sister plans to do. She wants to get derailed from the purposes of why we go to parliament. And so I hope to go and do a cleaning job and reclaim our parliament for ourselves. The temple where legislation is made has been defiled. The idea that parliamentarians can be bought, yeah? the bribes that go, those envelopes that go underground in parliament so that a vote can be swayed, that practice has to be stopped. The idea that parliament is a place where we go to be prostitutes, to be s selling ourselves, our values, our integrity to the highest bidder, it has to be challenged. So I'm going to parliament, first of all, to be an activist in parliament, to reclaim our parliament for our people, so that we can make laws, but also have the conduct of parliamentarians that's important, that's relevant. And I think that FDC has grown my muscle. Eh? People Power is a young movement that's building on work that elders, elderly people have already done. FDC has grown my muscle that I can get into a space, any space, and become the Omo, become the Jeek, become the detergent, wash out those dirty stains. Those dirty stains are washed out by the power of my mouth, but behind this mouth is a brain. <laughs> People undermine the words and the power of words, but revolutions, she said we are in a moment of revolution. Revolution leaders do not despise the power of words because words are mightier than the sword. I changed the entire Macquarie University using words. When my words could no longer do anything and I dressed and showed the world my breasts, those breasts came with a few words. She called them slurs and obscene words. Today, last night, you saw that uh, Macquarie was making inroads and questioning why there were so many cases in court, that Macquarie University was losing. How could that be open? Mm. How could that be possible? I opened that door. When I enter parliament, I want to build on this protest and activism that is really making my sisters uncomfortable and they're making, making them um, uh, say all sorts of dissing words. They're trying to dismiss me. But I think that if we don't return the owner into the title honorable member of woman, a, a honorable member of parliament, honorable woman member of parliament. We are doing a great disservice to ourselves as legislators, future legislators, but also to Ugandans. Okay. The owner that's going back to parliament needs a person who can wash this out, wash out the dirt, wash out the filth. And so I'm entering parliament as an activist, even in parliament, not just outside. So yes, I'll be legislating. I think that FDC has, a, has grown muscle to allow and support its members of parliament to represent the alternative contesting 
voice. Okay, Shamim, look, uh, Parliament, apart from legislation, it's supposed to be handling issues of accountability. Government parastatals, uh, when they are audited, the books come to Parliament and they question all the queries. But accountability in Parliament has failed because of the envelopes that Dr. Stellanians is talking about, mm -hmm. that Parliament is no longer what it is, what then no longer serves its purpose. How are you going to change that? Because it's almost um, a, a, a forum of exchange of money, money going to the highest uh, bidder. So, so how are you going to change this? And yeah. why are you running for a seat anyway of uh, a parliament that many detest? That's why I, I, I told you from the beginning, and our viewers plus the listeners, that I'm running for this position to serve in Chagulani's government in 2021. I'm not running to serve in a corrupt parliament. What happens if the status quo remains? No, that business has already been handled. We know how we are going to handle it, and Chagulani is going to be present. So we, we are not raising any more questions about that. Mm. We are not contradicting ourselves. We know what we are doing, and we are doing it the unusual way. That's why I refuse, I refuse to, 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 you know, to lay everything on table regarding how NUP is supposed to operate, how the popular movement is supposed to operate. No. You, you are so accountable are to your supporters. Yes, they need we, to know. Yes, we are. Mm. And we are saying we are legal, but... We are unusual. We are not going to do things the way our, our comrades have been handling them because that is the very reason they have failed to overthrow this government. I, I know, I, I respect Dr. Stella, and I know she's an activist and, uh, you know, aggressive, but look, assertive. how many, how many, yes, assertive, how many members of parliament currently do we have that are very good at talking and they are on the opposition and they have been there for quite some time but they have failed to change uh, the status quo of parliament the, 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 the corruption in parliament so is she trying to tell the entire world that she's the superb she's going to you know overshadow all the opposition members of parliament who are there and you know work magic and change this parliament what we need is not you know a person who thinks that is so aggressive and what we need assertive is, yeah what we need is a person or a leader who understands that what uganda needs today mm. is changing the regime we have to look at the bigger picture it, we have to look at the bigger picture because we are going to serve in a government we, she's not going to be the president of the republic of uganda she's only vying for the position of woman member of parliament as as well as my my comrade here so that is the bigger that's why I'm not looking at, you know, I have been looking at this parliament and uh, I was not admiring it. That's why I was not coming up to contest in the, in, the, in the previous elections. But I have a reason this time because I know government is going to change in 2021 with Chagulani as the president. So I hope I have answered that question very clearly. Uh, and, and maybe uh, what I wish to add is that... Um, we are also looking at leadership. Uh, we, we want to build the leadership of self-respect and respect for others. In, in the Chagulani generation, what the leadership that we're going to bring on table, we, we want leadership that brings on table everyone, even those people that oppose us. We do not want to, you know, to, we, we do not want to, you know, to just discard them just like that. We are for everyone. That's why we are people power. We can sit with anyone because we know there is something good in everyone and there is something bad in everyone. So we need to bring that kind of leadership. And, 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 and also to add on something, there is a challenge that we have actually faced uh, regarding... Uh, you, you, that we've had from the masses about the issue of accessibility uh, to, to, to accessing their members of parliament after they have been voted into office. That is an issue that we are working about. We, we are working on as a national unity platform. And I want to assure the people of Uganda and all the listeners and the viewers that as candidates on the national unity platform card, we are using the umbrella as our symbol, but. We are making our manifestos a reflection of what is in the president's manifesto, Honorable Robert Chagrin, because we know that we have to work from the top. Mm. We are basically going to clean up Uganda from scratch. Everything is so, everything is, is in a mess from the rule of law, law, democracy, everything, working conditions, everything is in a mess. That is the truth. So we, we know that we have to work from scratch. That is why we are looking at the manifesto of the president, Honorable Robert Chagrin Santamu, and a refl being a reflection, what is in that manifesto is a reflection of what is in the manifesto of all the members of parliament, the mayors that are going to come on that ticket, okay. and all change. Uh, 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 and that is what we, 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 we what, what, that is what we intend to do. Okay, so your, your parting shot, Shamim Malende. 
mm. as we end the program. Okay. Your party uh, shot. Basically, what I want to tell people is that in NUP or people power, we are using the rubber dabba style. The that what? is we <laughs> The unusual style. We are not going to do things you, the same way. You call it the, <laughs> the rubber dabba. The rubber dabba style. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a new language. That yeah, and 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 we are not going to do things the usual way. So don't expect us to be usual, please. Don't demand questions because you not get answers. If you want to get answers, come to NUP. Be a member of NUP. Secondly. The population is not about bothered about our political parties. They don't care whether we are FDC or whether we are DP Noop. They are they are understanding the people power. They they are understanding a revolution. They are they want people who can address their problems and issues. Uh, then uh, another thing is that. Uh, the FDC has had this ticket for 15 years. Or Nabila has been the, the member, of, member of parliament. So giving this seat to another FDC member. Mm. Is like changing out Museveni and giving the presidents to another any RM person. Do you expect results? They'll be defiant, like like he's saying. So, you Ugandans, Kampala people, you ha, you can change. You can you can you know pick another candidate from a different camp and find out and find out whether this person would actually execute things differently. And maybe lastly, I ha I want to bring the message of Honorable Robert Chagula and send them to all the people that are listening and viewing this program. Is that he says, please don't be scared. Don't remain in your houses. Keep your national IDs. Come out and vote on polling day. We are going to defend the election. We are going to win Museveni. He's going to. He's not going to be in the state house in 2021. And Chiagulani is going to be the president. Vote wisely. Vote noop. Vote people power. We are using the manvuli or the umbrella as our symbol on polling day. Thanks, Shamim. Farida, what is your parting shot in a minute or less? I would like to thank uh, NBS for this debate for having been able to come to this platform with these ladies. And next radio. And uh, next. Next, uh, next radio. Mm. Um, I also want to say that uh, indeed, as Shamima said, people of Kampala are not really looking at parties mm. or party symbols. They are looking at a person or people they can trust to serve them and create solutions to their problems. Not people who are coming you know, to first eat themselves and then be able to, or maybe not even be able to offer any kind of service. So they should, I urge people of Kampala to look critically at people who have been at service to them. I also uh, would like to request that we get another opportunity. We get another opportunity, preferably in Luganda, because... I'm receiving very many feedback, very many uh, uh, messages saying that um, some of the people, like market people, mm. do not understand English. Yeah, so if okay. we could so, have uh, so, a so, so what we'll do, speech, what we'll do, what we'll do, we'll, we'll send you an invoice during your time of campaign <laughs> so that you have time on on radio no. and on TV so, to pay no, and true, campaign true, in Luganda. True, but let that invoice be within our means since we are campaigning. Santa. You're the ruling party. I'm sure you'll manage. <laughs> Uh, well, as, as you finalize your, your, your I, as mm. I finalize, I would like to request uh, the people of Kampala to vote massively, turn up on voting day, vote Nambi Farida for woman MP to continue serving you. Nambi Farida, uh, thanks a bunch. Thank you. Dr. Stella Nyanzi, so in uh, just one minute oh. as we end the show, your parting shot. So my parting shot is vote for Stella Nyanzi, the revolutionary big mouth who knows that to do revolutionary warfare, one has to be radical, one has to be unusual, one has to use all tactics, not business as usual. How can someone say, we are doing rubber dabba style, but the same person is criticizing big mouth, is criticizing big language. Vote for Stella Nyazi, who's going to represent your issues loudly, unashamedly, using every tool that Kampala people need. But now Kampala Munonde, I want to thank Kanari Mugume for this opportunity. English, we shall use. Microphones, we shall use. Good language like today, we shall use. But we also need to be able to take power.
for the people of Kampala and the people of Uganda, vote for me because I've been tested and proved. I was imprisoned. I should have run away from this race. None of these women has been imprisoned. I've been imprisoned and I still insist from prison to parliament. Vote for Stella Nyanzi. <laughs> Thank you. That has been Dr. Stella Nyanzi running on the FDC ticket for woman MP race. And uh, in the studios, I've also been having Nambi Farida uh, from the NRM and uh, Shamim Malende from the National Unity Platform uh, Stroke People Power. People of Kampala, you've had it. You know who to choose. But then the debate on such issues continues next weekend, 9 to 11. We'll be right back here. Thanks for watching. We are trending on Twitter. We are number one. Thanks for making that happen. And keep your comments and views coming through. This has been The Big Talk. My name is Kanu Mgume. Good morning. Next Radio, nothing else but big hits, 106.1. To help fight the spread of coronavirus, learn Life Boy's hand-washing habits. Wash hands with soap or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Together, let's help fight the spread of coronavirus in Uganda. Brovard Sands Lodge, a place that helps you wash away the stress of the city. Whether you're on a 